family. I'm in the kitchen with you this afternoon. Hope you guys are having a wonderful blessed day because Grammy is. You can hear things going on in the background. I'm cooking Sunday dinner and or supper because we're having it kind of, I don't know, we usually eat a little early on Sunday and then that's all that we have to eat, usually one big meal. But I'm cooking some delicious pork chops and I'm going to be doing them in my Instant Pot and I thought I would bring you guys along so you can watch what I'm doing. I'm kind of going with the same concept that I usually do them in the oven, but I'm going to do them in this Instant Pot and I'll be right, right back with that in just a minute. Okay, I'm back and I've got my Instant Pot all heated up and we're going to saute, I've got it on saute, on normal, and uh, I've got to think you guys can see right there good. What I'm going to do is I'm going, I have this beautiful plate of pork chops and I'm going to uh, brown them on the saute feature. So we'll put one in there. If I move those around, I may be able to get two. Let me get some time. We're having a good dinner tonight. We're going to have uh, these uh, pork chops. And then we're going to have, I've already made beans in here. I made some brown beans just sitting over there cooling. They're delicious. I've got some cornbread in the oven. I can do two at a time. And uh, I had some leftover chicken and dressing for Thanksgiving that was in the freezer. And uh, me and my husband took a trip to Piedmont, Missouri, and there was snow up there, and we had a snow fight. It was a wonderful, wonderful day, and uh, we stopped at a meat processing place and uh, bought enough meat to go up our freezer, so I had to make some room, so I thought I'll cook the chicken and dressing, so it's in the oven, uh, getting cooked thoroughly through again, and I've got some cornbread in there to go with the beans, so we're having cornbread two different ways, cornbread dressing and cornbread. And I'm probably going to open up some green beans to have some kind of green vegetable, hearty fiber vegetable. So that's what I'm doing. So I thought you guys could come along with me while I'm browning these. And then once we get them browned, we're going to put them back in here and let them cook. We sure are. One thing I had, I was trying to keep something in here the other night and I kept getting a, a burn food notice in it. Hope you guys can hear me. Like I said, I've got a microphone, but I had to order another part for it to work. But um, I found out you have to have this thing completely scraped off. So I'm learning. Granny's learning how to use this. And I'm standing real close to it, and I'm not scared it's going to blow up. That's the number one thing. Because at first, I was so scared, and I was like, I actually am in love with it. I'm going to try to do some desserts in it. I, I've had a request to do a cheesecake. We'll see how that turns out. We're just letting these brown. Um, so, I got a lot of pork chops to brown. And, uh, I'm going to tell you guys a story about something. I can't remember. I'll remember in a minute. Okay, we're going to brown these all up. When I get them done, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I got all of those pork chops sauteed. They're going to be delicious. It's going to be wonderful. And uh, so now we're going to make a barbecue sauce to go in there. And I'm going to use your standard barbecue sauce, just a regular barbecue sauce. But I always spruce it up. I always make it mine. I may buy canned baked beans. But I always put something in them to make them my own. That's why I the boss in this kitchen. And you be the boss in yours. Because I like some uh, a little bit different flavor sometimes than what the baked beans have. Or I like it a little sweeter, depending on what you have. And, you know, years ago, there was only one kind of, kind of baked bean you could buy. Now, you can buy baked beans that go with hot dogs, baked beans that go with burgers. But they got all kinds. But 
I still like to just buy the cheap baked beans and spruce them up like my grandma used to do. So let's go over here and we're going to spruce up some barbecue sauce and we're going to have to have a good bit of it because we are going to, we're going to uh, barbecue these in the Instapot. So we're going to need a good bit of barbecue sauce. I'm going to say a good cup and a half of barbecue sauce in there because we want to make sure we got plenty, plenty, plenty of liquid. I'm going to add a little bit of, I'm going to add a little bit of chicken stock to this. And I'd say about a fourth of a teaspoon of Worcestershire. Like I said, some of the things I cook is just by eyeball. Now, this was a McCormick meatloaf seasoning. I love this stuff. I use it for everything. I marinate chicken in it. It has anything you could want in there. It has the dried onion, the garlic, and it doesn't have a lot of those. Uh, see, it's got brown sugar, onion, salt, spices, paprika, celery salt, mustard, black pepper. Uh, let's see. Garlic. Um, and a little bit of barley flour and some natural flavoring, including, including some smoke. It's got a little preservatives in it. They have to make sure it has a good shelf life. So, and we're going to put a little, like I said, chicken stock in there to make sure we have enough liquid. But see, oh, I wish you guys could smell that. But I want mine just a little bit sweeter. So I'm going to add just a little bit more powdered sugar to it. I'm powdered sugar. This is powdered sugar. You guys, I'm telling you, light brown sugar. And I'm probably going to put maybe about a third of a cup in there. I want them pork chops to be sticky and delicious when they come out of there. So, my kitchen is smelling so good right now. I'm telling you, with them beans, and I just got the cornbread out of the oven, and these pork chops are going to take a little longer because they have a bone in them. And I like my pork chops tender. I like everything that I eat cooked and well cooked. I like to be able to cut them with a fork if I can. So that is my sauce. And we're going to get measure out. I'm going to go over here and turn you guys so you can watch me. I'm going to get a measuring cup up here. Once I move out some of the stuff out of the way. And we're going to get a one cup of chicken broth in here. When I was in home ec, this would have got you a grade knocked off for measuring it in the air. You had to put it down and you had to be down there to look at it. But, okay, so now we're fixing to get things going. I uh, sauteed those and I've already worked to uh, get all the bits off the bottom so we won't have any problems with the burn warning. So I'm going to start adding these back in and I'm going to do them in layers. I'm going to put two pork chops in and a little bit of the sauce. I need to get me a, a spoon over here where I can start ladling it in there. I got something in there and it's time for broil. So we're going to just start kind of ladling that over the top of them. And there's six pork chops, so we're going to add two more. Kind of fit them around each other. Now we put two spoonfuls on each one, one on each pork chop. And then I'm going to put the last two in. They kind of have to go off to the side because I want to keep the, make sure I'm well below the, the, where my line is that I'm not supposed to go over. Like I said, I'm learning with this thing. I got it for Christmas and I absolutely love it. If I can cook in it, I do. I'm going to want to leave a drop in there. Get that out. Now, with the chicken stock, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it down to the side. I'm not going to pour it over the pork chops. That's why I put it in this thing where I could pour. I'm going to pour, pour it down on the side. And do it backwards because I don't want to get any of that 
that uh, sauce poured off of those chops. I want it on them. So now we have a half a cup, I mean a cup of chicken broth in there. And I might have could have got away with a half a cup, but so many pork chops I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of work with. Okay, so now we're going to press pressure cook. It's on high pressure. And we're going to do these for 10 minutes because they do have a bone. And I'm make sure I lock my seal back because I had cooked beans and forgot to do that. And uh, we're set to go. So it's getting ready to go up to pressure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you the story that I couldn't remember to tell you all ago. So on Sundays, my report for the newspaper, because I write a little article in our local newspaper every week, is due and I just really couldn't think of anything that I wanted to write about this week. I've just, like I said I, in my last video, I've been in a slump. Christmas is over. I love Christmas. Christmas is just wonderful and I'm an upbeat positive person but when Christmas goes, I think even a positive person kind of goes into a slump a little bit. So I've been trying to be really positive and do positive things. So today I sit down and I have really had my Granny Philbald on my mind. Now, my Granny Newman was the one that I talked about who met Elvis, and that was my mom's mother. But this Granny Phil, I mean, that was my dad's mo mother. But this, my mom's mom, my maternal grandmother, has just really been thinking about her a lot lately. And uh, she was a different kind of a woman. She was part Choctaw Indian. She was near six foot tall. And she was meaner than a grizzly bear. But she also gave some of the best hugs you ever got in your life. But she bruised you when she hugged you because she beat on you when she gave you a hug. But I loved her giving me a hug. I loved my grandma. And she only had to whoop me one time when I was eight years old. She had went to the garden and uh, she was keeping my little cousin. And she told me to let her know when she woke up from her nap. And I hollered out and said, she's woke up, Granny, and she's crying, and she's wet. And my grandma said, my Granny said, I will be in there in just a little while. Miss Independent, the oldest grandchild and the oldest child in my family, I was used to doing things on my own. And like I told you before, my mother wanted us to be independent very early on, so she taught us how to do things. At eight years old, I was washing clothes. I knew how to run the washer and the dryer, fold them, put them away in the closet, color code them, whatever needed to be done. Uh... But I decided to change her myself. And she used cloth diapers. And I put the safety pin just through the skin, but just enough for the baby to cry. And then I cried because it hurt me. And then I ran outside screaming that I'd hurt the baby. And my grandma runs in. My grandmother didn't whip me for that. She just scolded me and said, I told you to wait and it's going to be fine. You didn't get into the meat. That's what she said. She said, just the skin and it's going to bruise, but she's going to be fine. We'll put some medicine on it and it's okay. She's trying to soothe me and she's trying to soothe the, ba the baby at the same time. Well, I get mad because I'm mad at myself and I'm embarrassed. And I said, I'm just going to run away because I'm no good. I'm just worthless. And so I get about halfway up the fence. And my grandmother said, I'm not going to run after you, girl. I'm too old and I'm too tired. You get off that fence right now. And I had one leg over this six foot tall fence. And she took a belt and she whipped me. That was the only whipping that I ever got from my granny. And it was the only one that I ever needed. And when she was done, she didn't cry and she didn't apologize. She said, will I ever have to do that again? And I said, no. And my grandmother had cold black eyes. Indian eyes and it's like she could see into my soul and she knew if I was doing wrong or if I was telling a lie You couldn't keep anything from her. She was something else. Let me tell you so uh, That was my grandmother and I just was like I said thinking about her and she was just a special woman She could cook she could clean. I seen her change oil in a car before the woman could do anything She was a jack-of-all-trades She was a tough woman she fought and I and the story that I tell in the newspaper is that I, there was many stories about her getting into a fight and winning against grown men. And one of the fights, I seen two of them. I witnessed two of them as a child. And she never went looking for a fight, but she never backed down from one. And so um, she was just a wonderful woman. And, uh, you know, I 
there was nothing wrong. She didn't abuse me when she spanked me. She spanked me just good enough to let me know that, that she was the boss. And when she told me something, I was, because I could have fell off that fence and broke my neck. It was a really tall fence. But I wanted to share a picture of you because my grandmother was a beautiful woman, an absolute beautiful woman. And this is my grandmother. And this is her when she is probably about 16 years old. And you can see cold black eyes, cold hair, and you can't really tell her complexion here. This is another picture. This is a three-generation picture. And this is her. And I don't know exactly. She was in her, in her early 60s, I believe, here. But you can see the Indian in her. And you can see my mom. And you, that's me. And this was a happy day because my mother had quit school and in ninth grade. And uh, she had married my father. And uh, I was born the next year after she married my father. And this was her going back and getting her GED. And my grandmother was so proud of her for going back and doing that. That's a wonderful thing. So just thought I'd share this memory with you. But that's my grandma. And her name was Sue. Georgia Sue. And uh, she was a mess. And her mother, the Indian came from her mother. And uh, she could mix medicines and tonics. She knew what flowers and plants were and different things. And my grandmother said that when she was a young girl, of course, my grandmother married at 16 years old, too, that she just didn't take interest in that. And that by the time she was interested in it, my granny had gotten sick. My great granny had gotten sick and wasn't able to pass that knowledge on. And she said she would always be regretful for not learning that because she would have loved to have passed that on to me and to my cousins and to her daughters because it's a wonderful thing. And I am really interested in doing that. But anyway, this is going to pressure. When it's done, we're going to come back. We're going to plate up some food. And I'm going to show you guys what we're having for supper tonight. And y'all be envious. Mm-hmm. You sure will. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. These pork chops is done. They is done. And they is falling apart tender. And that's what I like. So let me show y'all what we're having for dinner tonight. There's the pork chops. There's the beans that I cooked earlier in there. That's the chicken and dressing. And there is my crunchy top cornbread. You want to know how to make that cornbread? Go back and watch some of my older videos. It's in there. And the green beans, the balsamic green beans is in there too. But these are just regular green beans tonight. I also have that bean recipe online. So let me let you guys drop down because I want you to get a good look of it. Let's get the plate down, son. The lid on this. Then pork chops down in that sauce and it looks good. So I'm going to cut this up. I'm going to show y'all how tender this is. I probably could cut it with just a fork. That's how tender it is. But I'm going to be all fancy and have a use this knife. I mean it is tender, tender, tender. And I put some of that barbecue sauce that's down in there kind of poured it over the top of it. Won't you guys look at that steaming hot. Turn it up here. Mmm. That is good. Mmm. 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 Mm. Well, another instant pot success for Grammy Nano. Kitchen's still standing. Didn't blow nothing up. And also, yesterday was Miss Lori at Whipple World Holler's birthday. I just wanted to give her a shout out and a happy birthday to her. And, uh, well, you guys ain't going to be seeing this until tomorrow morning. Her birthday was on Saturday. So, happy belated birthday, Miss Lori. Hope you had a wonderful, blessed day. You guys have a wonderful day. Until next time, I'm Grammy Nene, and I was so glad to have you guys in the kitchen with me. See you later.